The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour for Monday, Monday, the 18th of November. And we're looking at the Dow down 53 at 43,389. This is probably the session that should try to see some upward uh, mobility. And let me just show you this here. This is one of the reasons why I still remain uh, quite positive on the on the uh, market itself <clears throat> what we're looking at here is the nine period moving average green because it went over the black 14 period moving average and that is positive and that's the dow chart the big thick gray line is the current price of the dow look how nicely it is up over the green uh, moving average and the green is nicely up over the 14. So the Dow is down 50. The S&P right now, the S&P is trading at 58.79, up eight and a half. And look here as well, very nicely over the green uh, moving average. And that's the nine period moving average. And the nine is over the 14. Look here, the QQQ, the index 100 is up uh, 2.07 at 498.62 here again nine period is just barely over the nine period moving the, the price is over the nine period moving average but the nine is up above the the black 14 period moving average and it has been that way since the break to the upside uh, the last one on the night on the 10th of november if you go to the iwm <clears throat> Same thing, price is way above the 9 period moving average, 9 is way above the 14. This is the daily chart, and, oh, sorry, this is the weekly chart. Oh, I didn't realize that. Let me go to the daily. Oh, daily price is underneath the black 14 period moving average, but the 9 and is way above the 14. That's good. very good. Let me go back to the Dow. I'm sorry, I thought I had the daily. Look, the weekly, the Dow is right on the 14 period moving average, but the 9 is still way above the 14. That is good. S&P. Do it again. Dot X, there it is. Uh, S&P is trading right now at uh, 5879.53, up nine. Oh, it's actually now up nine. Look, nicely above the 14 period moving average in terms of the 914, but the price is under it. So there's work to be done. IWM, Russell 2000. Also, underneath the 14 period moving average, but the nine is still very strong. I, I, I have to still think that this is very positive. That's all there is to it. Looking at the um, SMHs, that's different. SMHs went pink on Friday and it's pink today. And that's the clue that there is a rotation going on. And within this rotation, what we are looking at is certain sectors are doing very well and others are coming under some selling pressure. So with that said, let me just see, let me show you something very interesting. Gold, very strongly underneath the pink nine period moving average. Price of the nine is underneath the 14. And yet there's a very strong route to the upside. It's up $42 at 26.12. Well, it is kind of over over sold let me go back to my uh, triple charts daily on the left weekly in the middle monthly on the right and you can see when i go to the gold gc uh, that there has been a turnaround in the stochastic from single digits to 11 percent there has been just a little hint of a turn up in the histogram of the macd the turn up in the relative strength there's so much work to be done to get this to change trend from a, a down a sell mode even to just a buy signal and you'd have to see first a touch of the 26 27 pink nine period moving average and then you'd need to see the 14 period moving average uh pierced and that would be a that's a 20 649 so it's a work in progress but as i say i think that this uh, over the weekend, was it over the Friday or maybe over the weekend, announcement that the uh, uh, United States will supply Ukraine with the weapons that they needed. Uh, that, that's a big deal. You know, gold is treating it as a big deal. Let's look at silver. Silver right now is also up some. It's up 2.7%, up 0.83 at 31.27. 
it already started on Friday with a doji candle from the low that was made just above the 200 period moving average. So this is a big move because it's actually tagged the pink nine period moving average. The gold didn't. And it's holding much better in terms of the weekly chart. And of course, the, the gold and silver have different connotations. Gold is just as pure metal. Silver <clears throat> has connotations both for batteries, it used to be for the photography. I think those days are a little bit gone. So there is a functional aspect to silver. So it's a little different in the connotation that we look at high-grade copper. High-grade copper finally got a little bit of a green candle, uh, up 0.03 and 4.09. That's important. I, so I was asked if I would look at uranium. Are you... Or U R N M in my um, webinar that I did. That should be, I believe it'll be up today. I thought it would be up over the weekend. It, it, there's no real time sequence in that, that it's just, it had to get done the next few days. This is a work in progress saying over the next uh, period of the market, what are we looking at? And that's really what it discusses. And we've already started putting positions on. One of them's already started to do very nicely. Okay, so uranium. Up quite well, uh, quite nicely because of the uh, connotation. This is the whole thing that goes with uranium. Uh, Russia, I didn't, re I forgot. I'm going to sneeze. Is that a commercial coming up? Well, I, <coughs> excuse me, I think I did that the other day as well, just before the break. So uh, uranium, uh, Russia supplies us with some part of uranium, I believe. I must check that out. But that's what I heard. And I said, I thought I heard that. And I couldn't believe it. But yes. So maybe there's that connotation there as well. A lot of connotations today. Con, 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 con. We're looking at 47.71, up $1.85. And uh, oh, that's what it was. I also saw someone say, yes, with my CCJ, they have uh, Chemico Core. Yeah, that's a nice move up today, up $1.43, 55.02. Got a little work to do to get that U-shaped pattern going back to the top. In the meantime, the most recent top in the 58 area. Uh, yeah, this is good. And I say that I anticipated that somehow or other in 2024, you will see uranium continue to lead and maybe close towards the highs of the year. I don't know if that's going to be the case. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, we do have one. We have, we've we had it for quite some time. This is Uranium Energy Corp at $7.89, up 48 cents, up 6.5% today. Yeah, it's a work in progress. We'll see if that can continue. Where did I get to? I got to the metals. Let's go to the crude oil. Crude oil right now also spiking. Big overlapping candle. This is an engulfing candle, candle from uh, Friday because it had a lower high and now it's have a lower low and uh, now it has a low, higher low. Ay, ay, ay. A lower low and now it has a higher high. That's what I meant to say. Uh, 68.72 up $1.79. But really, if you look at it, it's just stuck in this range. Uh, no, I don't think uh, crude is going to do very much at this particular point. Now, this is really important. U.S. bonds. The bonds made a lower low today. Uh, it's a continuing this. Look, this is a single leg A to the downside. Trough A. Well, it isn't a trough yet because it hasn't made. Oh, no, no. That was a trough. Friday, the low was 115 and 10 30 seconds. Uh, Thursday, uh, Friday, it was 115 and 11. So that is A. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this particular pattern because it turns out very often that it can be a positive pattern. I'll explain why. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions, our Dallas Down. Uh, 85, but the S&P is up 9. A very big divergence right there. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report 
packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. We're back, Basil Trapp and Tiger Thing Business Hour. Let's get to some of the questions as well. I think we just did, did the, uh, I'll do it again. Let me just do the bonds right now, uh, just to say that the, this is a leg B. So in the weekly chart, you see this peak D that was made, Chapman Wave, you always look at the fourth highest peak called peak D, and you see, you assess whether it's gonna be able to uh, continue higher or whether it's gonna pull back. That's really important. And I just need to do something here. Uh, I'm going to do that right now. Three. Let's go to three just for the moment. Okay. And what we're looking at is from a peak D, we came straight down. And except for that one-tenth of a, a higher high on from the low of Thursday, Friday, so we've gone to a lower low today. What sometimes happens when there's a straight down move like that, there is a bounce, and the bounce is pretty quick, and it's pretty sharp. And then you've got to see whether or not you retest it or you've actually made a low. Not the low, but a low. So I'm looking at this, I'm saying if by today's Monday, so let's go to all the way through to Wednesday at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, towards the end of the day. If there's a rally, it needs to be a rally that goes from 115 and 21, 30 seconds right now. This is the bonds. It re needs to tag the 117 and a half area. Uh, hopefully not just tag it, but tag and then go above it. But I'm saying at least tag that, and that will be important. So I'm watching this very closely because, you know, the higher yields have been impacting to a certain extent uh, areas like um, – like Toll Brothers, it's not seriously, funnily enough, but it is. it has been impacted in the sense that there has been a pullback from the highs, from the 160 area down to 152. It's not a big deal, but it is starting to impact it. Now, here's another thing. Uh, I wrote it down. I, I meant to mention this because I came across it, and I always like to give you information as I receive it. Uh, for examples, these are examples that – demonstrate the work that I do that over the years. So I've always said that if you get to a peak C and off, off a start of starting move, and then it takes a while to get to that leg D, so often that D becomes an instant restart. In other words, not only does it go to a D, maybe it'll pull back for one bar just slightly, but it'll quickly go to a higher high. 
Well, we got that exactly. TDG's Trans Time uh, Group is parts for aircraft. Uh, back in September, I'll give you the exact date if you want to look at it. It made a peak right there. That was on the sorry, that was the 30th of August. It made a peak C at 1,305.83. Then it pulled back pretty sharply and it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And on the 10th day, it went to a higher high and that became the D. But then it pulled back just fractionally, a little doji candle the next day, and then it went to a higher high. Well, if that's the case, that becomes E. Um, the exact discussion that I've had saying if you take a while to go from a peak C to leg D very often, if within a day or two it goes to or a bar or two, it goes to a higher high. Consider that there could be an alternative count. Then it could happen to an E, F slash B, C, D, and then it made its high with a little doji candle right there at 1424.68 on the 14th of uh, October. Pull back very sharp. We had a big bounce, gap up bounce must have been used, and then went all the way down to 1250 where it's trading right now. So I just went, look, here is possibly an alternate count, G slash C. There's your D, and within three bars in the weekly, it goes to a high high. So all I'm saying is that was a technique that I came across over the weekend and said, ah, there's a, one of my many examples of this particular technique. The next thing we're looking at is uh, where did it go? Yeah, Boston Scientific, BSX. Now, we were in this a long time ago, got out, haven't even bothered with it for ages, except I spent some time, might have been one of the webinars, uh, to say, gosh, I haven't looked at it for a while. Look how nice it is. It, it's at recovery highs. Well, um, today it gapped up leg E after that peak D on Wednesday. And it's trading at 90.62, up 3.63, at an all, I believe it's an all-time high. I know a funny thing about Boston Scientific is, yeah, all-time high. Once upon a time, I, I met someone, oh, I'm talking about 20-something years ago, and he worked for Boston Scientific. And uh, I didn't know, I usually don't ask people what they, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, he came up with it, Boston Scientific. I said, oh, Boston Scientific. And I, I didn't want to say to him, I just got a sell signal. In fact, it was way back. Uh, let me see, just for fun, let's just do this right now. Um, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. One, two, three. Yeah, right there. So, no, this is, yes, it was in 2004. And I said, oh, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I follow that stock. Uh, it looks a little choppy right now. And he said, oh, yeah, they've been having trouble with certain uh, patents, a whole bunch of things. Um, and with that said, <laughs> what happened was it made this peak. I believe it's A, B, C, D. I think I had gotten to a peak F right there, that high. That was at 46 point. 40, 45.50. But I also think that it had made a round number, 90 or something like that. It made a round number. So I didn't say anything, but I followed it. And we, we're still friends to this day. I don't ever discuss it. But look at this cup formation that was formed going to that peak E back in 2019 or 2022 at about 46 with a split 46 right there about 46.62 and then pull back sharply and then it's come all the way back and now it's back into a leg E. Isn't that amazing? A leg E, there it is, move it over to an all-time high. Boston Scientific. And I used to make note of Boston Scientific because the CEO uh, loved music and he gave a chunk to my... Um, to the where I got my graduate degree in New England Conservatory of Music, so I used to follow it. But we, you know, we've, we've, except for the one time that we had it and did very well, we have not had it for ages and ages. All right. So within that context, I just wanted to mention that in if you whoops, see, I didn't mean to do that. I, I'm only mentioning this now because it popped up the other day as doing very very well. And I didn't realize it was so close to all-time outs and all-time highs. The other thing is that if you look at 
med, this, uh, this is Boston Scientific Core in Medical Instruments. Look, he has A, which is in the uh, Scientific Solutions for Tabs and Businesses. Hasn't done all that well. We had this once, Agilent uh, Scientific, we had it for a long time, did very well, haven't gone back in for ages. If you look at one of my favorites, I don't think we've ever been it, and yes, one of my favorites, because you drive by it on Route uh, 128, Route uh, 95 uh, North, I think 93 or 95 North, it's 128, we know it here in the Boston area. That's, there we are. Uh-oh. I'm hearing a bing, bing, bing. I don't like that when that happens. Okay, there's a break coming up. I needed a break. Anyway, Thermofine Scientific is down uh, five at 506.70 has come closer to 660's uh, all time high 600 uh, yeah if you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey you've no doubt come across many folks who push forex trading as a way to make big money quickly Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Hi, folks, we're back and we're looking at, let me just finish this up. Yeah, 6.79 down at 506.70. This is Boston Thermo Fisher Scientific. See, that's what I'm, I wanted to point out, and that's what I pointed out to my subscribers in my webinars and on in my video overview on uh, Friday that within the context of different sectors, some, some of the stocks in it are doing poorly and others are just screaming and fewer and fewer are starting to scream to the upside. So this is becoming a lot more selective. I'll talk about my overview in a moment. But in the meantime, Thermo Fisher, look at that, May 672.34 at a peak E back in December of 2021, pulls back. And then I drew in this uh, left side, right side, potential price tie match with the Chevron Wave inside wedge target repellent zone. It went right there back in early 2024, uh, maybe March or so. No, it was later. So it was August. And then it arched over. In other words, this left side, right side price tie match, it's, out of, it's gone. It's finished. What we're looking now is a, a, an arch over. So as I'm saying, in different areas, you just got to be very careful. I've got others that I'd look at. I don't want to waste time. What I want to go to straight away is within the context, I was asked about the uh, E-mini and what am I looking at. So far, the, you're in a leg C in the 10-minute chart with 59.19 as a 200 period exponential moving average. So another question came in. Why was I still looking positively at the market when there are a lot of signals that are suggesting um, – that is suggesting this could be not just a top, but a very serious top, especially if the uh, United States goes all out um, with Ukraine at this particular junction and with the presidential change. I All I'm saying is, remember I showed you those um, moving averages, 914, they've been uh, my benchmark for years. They are the, the instruments of last resort when the other technicals are failing. Those are the ones that get 914 a crossover is what keeps me in the trade saying, no, I've got to stay with that. When that fails, I will fail with it. Look, here's um, R is Ryder. Let me just move this over so you can see the actual name right there. Oops, there we go. Look, Ryder, where did it go to? Oh, there it is. Ryder System, Supply Chain, Transportation, Fleet Management Solutions. Look how nicely it's done. I, I don't get a sense here that everything's falling apart. I get a sense that there's a lot that's going right. <laughs> I think that's really important. Um, when I go to um, when I go to uh, uh, Syntas, I did this. I'm not going to waste time right now. Just uh, Syntas had a really nice all-time high there, though, 227.36, pulling back, just digesting gains, leg E in the weekly chart. Yeah, we could see that rotation. Now, I do want to show you this because it is so important. I'm going to move that over. Oh, I hope I haven't lost it. Uh-oh, where did it go? Is this it? I hope this is I'm going to click it and see. Click and hope we got it. Yes. So this is the Dow chart that I keep showing, and I showed for last week, all of last week, and then I showed in my video for my subscribers on Friday, and I've done it before my uh, for the webinar uh, stocks and sectors that should do well in this coming phase. I said we made a high back in March of 2024. If I use a time lapse going to the high of July, the Ju July high of 2024, and I measure that move from the high to high, my thinking was as a guide, if I looked at high to high for the next phrase from July the 18th to the measured move, that's all it is. Just a, It looks like it's a very important, if I could have just put a straight line down, a straight line down, I would have done that. But this gave me the accuracy. And lo and behold, what do we have? We have right there, this is the plumb line right there. Oops, sorry. Move it over, there it is. There's the line, the high and the low. And what we're looking at is the 11th of November was going to be the exact measurements. Well, I mean, really, we went to the exact high. The all-time high on the Dow. The s and is a little different, but all-time high on the Dow. But I didn't feel that I could put a dark news cloud cover, even though the bond yields were going higher. I just felt very strongly that I need to stick with the plan. And the plan was to follow the nine-period moving average and see if it can hold 
And if it turns pink, that's one thing. If it stays green, that's another. And that's where we are. So I thought I'd mention that. Okay, enough of that. Another couple of questions came in. Uh, where, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, XLF, the XLF, which is the financials. Did I type in the wrong place? Yes, I did. Let's just do that right here. XLF is the S&P. These are the money center banks. Uh, doing nicely. It's down 12 cents to 49.76. Went to a new all-time high about one, two, three, four, five, six sessions ago at 50.14, but it's still holding sideways. I think this is actually going to pull back a little bit in another couple of days. It's at a, at a high, all-time high. But what's really important is I wanted to see the same relationship between the S&P 500 being maybe a leader and the IWM Russell 2000 being a laggard, a loser. I wanted to see that sector start to move very strongly to the upside. I wanted to see the KRE, the regional banks, start to move to the upside. And they have. They failed to get to the 220, right here, two, whoops, KRE, KRE. They failed to get um, to the high that I was wanting to see in this phase in November. So far, they haven't done it. They went to 65, 50, 32. That was the doji candle high from 2023. But 2022, the high of the uh, August of 2022 at 68.83. The all-time high is 78.81. So this is 10 points lower. That's the target for November. Can it achieve it? I have no idea. But everything, nine is over the 14. That's great. Da daily. Weekly. Price is way, way over the nine, and the nine's way over the 14. Very good. All the technicals are good. The stochastic's only at 84%, but that's okay. And the uh, monthly is in leg D with good technicals. So, so far, that's the relationship I've been looking at. So you can see S&P, all-time high. <clears throat> on the uh, So the Dow was on the 11th. This, I think, was a day later, was it? No, on the 11th as well. Uh, 60, 17.31, and now you've got the rally uh, today so far from the low, and that doesn't look like very much at all in the IWM. The high was 242.39 on the 12th, but the all-time high is, let me squeeze this a little bit so that you can see it better, squeeze, 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 right there. Up oh, wrong one, squeeze this one. There it is, okay, so with this said, you're looking at the IWM lagging still. It had a big move up to 242.39 on the 12th. Then it pulled back, but 244.46 is my target for November. Uh, maybe early December, but I'd like to see it in November. But look at this candle so far. Chapman wave green, Roman inverted Roman candle. You need to see 235. Maybe by the end of the week, I, I would like to see that. That's important. I'll be back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, just to get to uh, Traded G in the, in the YouTube, I, when I was looking at the item reversals, I said, if there is an island reversal and you, you you gap down, so now you've made that little island, if you continue much lower, that concerns me. But the only thing that concerned me was if my 9 period 14, uh, 9, 14 cross negative. To me, that's the most important thing. And as I, and the reason why we have no shorts, even though I, I considered very much going into the short side of the SOXS, that would be the, S, the semiconductors, I, I didn't want my mind to be deflected. It's really important that certain things work and continue to work. So I just put that in as a technical thing, but it wasn't. It wasn't that I was saying that's what I think is going to happen. I was saying if it did happen, then you've got to treat it with respect. I, I treat all the technicals with respect because you're not the market. You can only do the best in terms of using your analytical tools. So in that, in that regard, let me just mention here, thank you, Jacob. I know it was hard for you to do. You had a very busy week, but thank you for doing it. Uh, here's my sectors and stocks for the rest of, for the next market phase. The opening call subscriber webinar, Basil Chapman, Thursday, November the 14th. Uh, 2024, 4 o'clock to 5.30. That was all done. And I, it wasn't that it had to be done right now. What I had said is it's best for you to subscribe as soon as you hear about it, if you were interested, because I'm not waiting for each, I'm not waiting for Thursday uh, to finish the webinar and then Friday put in the new news. I, I went right through. So we, in fact, had positions that we've put on. And... Um, I, so that was important. It, it, it's an ongoing thing. It's saying this is what we're looking at. So within that context, what I wanted to say is, the, to, look, yeah. Oh, do I remember it now? I wrote oh IWN. So the IWS, your IWM. This is the IWN. This is the Russell two thousand. Typed it in the wrong place. Right there. IWN for Nancy is. The iShares Russell 2000 value ETF. So that made a new recovery high. In fact, right here, if I can go to it, here's the monthly chart. Did a beautiful cup formation. It went to an all-time high. So that says to me, just as we used to look at value, <clears throat> RSP, which is the oh, this is the equal, this is S&P 500 equal weight ETF at an all-time high, and we were looking at the SPLV. There it is. S&P low volatility fund going to an all-time high. As we had those relationships going and that they were all in bullish mode, but one got to a high after the other. So I'm expecting that the IWN for value is leading the IWM. This is just my speculation. I don't know if that's going to work out. But so far, you can see this beautiful cup formation. Did it in the perfect time. No, it hasn't. 
244.46 was the all-time high that we were looking at from November 2021. And my left side, right side price time match went to this month, right in November. But we haven't done it. We missed it by two points. So we did it in time, but we haven't done it in points. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Now, a lot of other questions. I need to get to them right away. So, you know, got that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Yeah. So, um, Apple. Apple right now is trading up very squeaky. So it got a peak A right there, gray A, and then a gray B. The MACD finally is crossing today by 0.01, crossing positive. The day is young. We have to wait for the day to conclude, but that's good. Stochastic's lagging. On balance is lagging. So it went on Thursday. It went to 228.87. Pull back on Friday. Today's high is 228.79. <laughs> 79. It hasn't got there yet. It's got just a couple of cents to go to a leg C, a very quick A to B, to, and a leg C. So I'm watching that. But if you look at the weekly chart, just a high level consolidation. Look at the monthly chart, high level consolidation, peak D, uh, leg D, because you have to wait for the end of the month. Amazon, this is going to be very interesting. Why? Because Amazon gapped down on Friday. And it's weak today. And if you look at the RTH, oh, please say that I've still got the notations there. Yes. Um, if you look at the monthly chart, leg E, Van Eck Retail ETF and Amazon is 20%. If you look at the weekly chart, I've, I'm going to call that a leg F for now. It could have an alternate account, but everything's really good. And if you look at the daily, this is the one that gives the most trouble because that went to a G. This cannot be... An H, there's never an H, so I'm going to call it an A, and the B could fail, but it has gone to an A, and it's gone to a B. If you go to the XRT, ah, so here's the S Van Egg Retail ETF, Amazon 20%, uh -uh. Oh, Spider S&P Retail Fund, S uh, Amazon doesn't have the same cachet, but look at this, sideways with slightly higher highs in the weekly chart, just started a leg D in the monthly chart, and you've got that same spike to the top in the daily. And I have no choice but to say that is, that's a peak C, therefore this is D and then E. I've got different notations for all these different things. But the technicals are still very strong. So trying to put it together, we've got the uh, holiday season coming up. So far, the retail is saying, not bad, not bad. Let's go to Walmart. Walmart, <clears throat> whoops, Walmart over here. Yeah, WMT. Walmart trading an all-time high a few days ago at 85.79 uh, with a two-bar reversal, Chapman two-bar reversal. It just says, be careful, though. That often uh, designates some kind of a top, but it isn't yet. The line's still strong. Weekly chance leg D. There's this long-term trend line that it keeps bumping up against. Let me make it a little more official. This is the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look at that. Right there, bring it down just a sixteenth of an inch or less. Right there, it says you've got yourself you're into the into the difficult range right there where it keeps getting repelled, but it also is acting as a magnet line. And you've got a leg F in the monthly chart, and it could be an alternate count because that's an instant restart in the monthly. Wow, a lot going on. Let's go to Costco. Costco straight, same thing, made a beautiful top, but this is different. An alternate count, 962 round number high. Can you believe Costco makes a round number high with a 914 round number open on the 8th of November <clears throat> and then really comes down to the 911 area? <clears throat> that is 50 points. It's a 5 6% pullback in a split second just in, in a week. And now I've got this as a peak C. In the weekly chart, it looks like it should take a little while to go higher. So I'm just going to sum this up before we get to the uh, final segment where I really do the summing up. I believe what I'm looking at is a rotation through the different sectors. I sometimes use this as an example. Uh, when finally one particular sector gets kind of overbought, another sector in a bull phase, another sector takes it over. For instance, look here. Yeah, this is the IW, the ARKK. <clears throat> Arc Innovation ETF makes a peak C1, C2 double top at 58 point, what was it, 19, 58.38 uh, last week. It's a leg C in the weekly chart. 
a leg D in the month here. But look at that slow move to the upside. A stair step move, pull back. Doesn't take out the 29.43, December 2022 low. Goes to B, sharp pull back. Higher high, slightly higher. C pulls back. And then it makes another leg up to D. So I think we're looking at a rotation. And that's really important. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Team Mission Zone. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, so I, I must apologize to my subscribers. I actually even mentioned the stock and I didn't do anything about it so far. Um, I haven't even completed the uh, update of the notations. Let me move that to a D and that'll become an E. Here's a stock. There were so many of these micro uh, bio biotech stocks. I mean, what's happening in the biotech world is just unbelievable. So um, my medics group, Inc., Placental Biologics, Wound Care Products, just sounded perfect uh, recently. It was down the 740 area where it came on my screamer list and I said oh can I really do this and then I said to subscribers over the weekend that we will start because we've got a really a core positions that we want now I can start experimenting back again with these screamers under ten dollar stocks and here it is screaming uh, the other day and it goes goes from seven uh, seven fifty to nine thirty eight right now um, that's that's really nice and there's a leg is this an, another thing I want you to say is this a leg a above the previous high. So I'll be doing some work on this, but this is the kind of thing that I'm looking at right now because uh, we're in our positions just for the moment. I'll add to some and I'll subtract to some, but in the meantime, I just need to go this one more time. 
I, I don't know if I'm going to be correct or not, but it just seems to me if I stick with the plan, the plan says that there was a high exactly on the Dow. I couldn't believe it. The measured move that I had to the day uh, in the Dow on the 11th, but I don't have anything that's suggesting to me that that is a top of consequences, just a pullback. I, that's what I'm looking at. I could be totally wrong, but I think we're seeing this rotation. The rotation says we will go into other areas, even if there is somewhat in a pullback on stocks of areas that have been very strong lately. So that's what I, my stance is right now. Um, I don't see anything other than uh, digestive phases in just certain stocks, certain areas, but other areas are taking up the slack. But we need to see where we close today. The Dow hasn't even closed positive, uh, closed positive from the day. It's still down 12. I need to see it up 35 or more points to say, aha. And I want to see the IWM move even better. I want to see the SMHs move from.